Backed by popular demand, all of your comments are calling for it. You want more information on how to build a power team. So today we're gonna to be going live and we're gonna be getting some real information, real questions from people as we show you how exactly it is you go about building a team to support you so that you can get your life back, step into deeper freedom, and love how you're actually going about building your wealth. All right, friends, how we doing? This is Chris Crone. Hey guys, Stephen Michael Miller here. And today we're gonna to be doing a follow-up. This is our first time doing a Facebook Live and it's gonna be on how you build your power team. And if you've seen some of our YouTube videos or some that we've posted, then you actually know that this is a, this is a really important topic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick rundown on what it is. And then we've got Nate in the back that's gonna be taking questions, gonna be moderating. So that we're gonna make this very, very interactive today. It's gonna to be definitely a different style of video. I think the most important thing that we can start off with is why a power team in the first place. And by the way, we want you to comment why do you think it's important to be able to build your power team? Yeah, actually right now in the comments, just write what is the number one thing that you need in a power team? Just go ahead and put it right now in the comments because this is really what we're gonna be talking about. And if you need something, we wanna be we want to be seeing from you. We wanna kind of respond. This is a live, live uh, video right now. So go ahead and, and put your comments in right now. But why a power team? Uh, and I think this may be an obvious answer to people, Chris, but I think the biggest thing that we need a power team for is to fill in the gaps where we don't have expertise. One of our, one of our most famous sayings we've been saying for years and you know which is if you want something done, done right, right don't, don't do it yourself. yourself and we say that all the time and that's what a power team is about it's about taking those pieces that you aren't expert in and allowing an expert to come in and fill those gaps yeah and i want to even go even bigger picture on why and i want to go to a place called freedom right i mean the reality is steven says yeah fill in the gaps on the things that you don't know absolutely in addition yeah what are the things that you can do that you don't want to do Good or point. that you shouldn't be doing i mean so often we're the ones that are the saboteurs of our own business and if it's your business and it's not going well then there's only one person to point at you've done something wrong you've made a wrong choice and listen don't step into the shame and the guilt of it how do you correct that and so you've got to get tied to the real reason for why you're doing it and that reason for me at least it's freedom. Absolutely. I mean, we're gauging in this real estate. We're going back to our roots. We're, we're, we're doing it through the game of real estate. We're doing it intelligently. We're doing it real estate for the 21st century. But it's all about having greater freedom. And a team creates freedom because a team means that when you are coordinated, it means that they're there to do things that you can't do or don't want to do or shouldn't do. And it's still going to take place, which means guess what? Freedom in that moment more time. So we talked about the F's, right? The F's of building your power team. If you've watched the videos that we posted in the comments, this is kind of the follow-up for those videos. I wanted to add another F that we haven't talked about. So we've talked about freedom, finding, fixing, funding, filling, and follow-up, right? These are the F's of, of building this power team, individuals that can handle those things for you. But the one F that we really didn't talk about, which I think is what keeps most people out of the game, is fear. Yeah, absolutely. And fear is something that I've seen come up uh, amongst different individuals that are part of the community, people that are first starting to get into the community. And so I wanted to, I wanted to speak to this fear because I, I think that if we can learn to control or overcome or have courage through that fear, then we can have the success. And building a power team can someone, sometimes help us get over that fear. You know, and you can take fear and you can put it in the same bucket as doubt. Sure. Because fear and doubt, you've got the same chemical process going through your body that produces fear the opposite with the same chemical is called excitement. So what we'll do is we'll become nervous and we'll take that excitement energy, we'll take that adrenaline and our parasynthetic system that goes into the fly or flight mode, we're gonna translate that into fear and all of a sudden, whether it's fear, or whether it's doubt, all it really means is that I have stepped away from my choice of certainty. Steven, so often we are not doing real estate, we're just learning, we're not making it happen, we're not succeeding because we have lost touch with our certainty. For example, um, years and years ago I read a book that was co-written by Mark Victor Hansen and Robert Allen. And it's called the, I think like the One Minute Millionaire or something like yeah. that. And it was two books in one. It was really kind of genius because on each side of the book, if you flipped it around, it was the other person's book. And it was, it, what it represented was the logic of wealth building and the emotion of wealth building. And Mark Victor Hansen wrote a very tender story on the emotion of wealth building. And what and he did is he described the story of a woman that had 90 days to come up with a ludicrous amount of money, a million dollars or something. Yeah. And I've asked myself, if I was in a situation where I had to build wealth or make a lot of money in a short period of time, could I do it? And I want you to ask yourself that question. When it matters, 
will you show up? Because where we get stuck is in the tyranny of how. Well, I was gonna do it, but then I didn't know how to do this yeah. part, and how translated into I didn't do it, my fear rose, my doubts came in, when the reality is when you have an absolute certainty for what you're doing, if you have a greater conviction of what you want and why, and that it's going to be. So for example, you could say in these next 90 days, I'm doing a deal, and I'm challenging you right now to do a deal in 90 days. 90 days means it's gotta be active, it's a realistic time frame, and everyone that's part of this community, community, you can do this, but are you willing to take on the absolute certainty that you can do that? What are you willing to put on the line if not just your word alone. So for just a moment, I want you to right now in the comments, talk about what is your biggest fear. Holding just, you back. Just put it right now in the comments so that we can see it. What is your biggest fear right now in building a power team or moving forward towards your next deal? So I wanna, I wanna wait just for a second as you guys are kind of going, why don't you talk to them for just a minute? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at some of these comments here. Or do you have anything coming in? All right, Okay. so, so I'm gonna take this question. Should I go to the bank to pre-qualify? Let's just hit the F's real quick. First of all, if we've talked about the big reason is, uh, is freedom, the thing that holds us back from our freedom is our fear, yep. and the thing that keeps us from overcoming our fear is a lack of certainty, which only comes down to a personal, come hell or high water choice. Then we get into the rest of the S for the power team. We're gonna hit them just briefly here. Find, fix, fund, fill, follow up. Find, fix, fund, fill, follow up. Find, fix, fund, fill, follow up. Number one, find. You need a teammate that's out there finding the deals for you, unless that's your jam and that's what you love doing. Yep. Remember, a freedom for you is like, I don't like finding deals. Then guess what? You get to have freedom by adding a member of your team that likes to find deals. And by having that person, you become freer. So on, on find, bring someone to the table. Now, normally in most cases, that's gonna mean one of two things. It's either find a realtor, right? If you go to these networking groups, find a realtor, someone with the license or investor that has deals that they're gonna wholesale or give off to you or can find for you. Or it's gonna be working with Steven and I where we have an excess of nationwide amazing killer deals just waiting for you to sign up and nab one of them. Okay, so you gotta have a finder on your team, a bird dog that can help you do that. Number two, you need someone who will help fix these properties, right? Unless you like fixing, which unless, I don't recommend. Unless you wanna put on the tool belt. You know, some people love to just strap it on and get to work and, and you know, pull the hammer out, but unless that's you, if you don't want to be part of that, then you need to find someone who's competent, someone that can get after it and do it at a decent cost, right? Because this is all about being as, as profitable as you possibly can and only doing the work that's necessary as well. So often we get stuck in trying to fix the home up to maybe your own standard. And I will say this right now, if you're an investor, Put on your investor goggles. This isn't about putting granite throughout the home or updating the gold fixtures, right? This is about fixing it to the proper measure of what that home in that market will bear and carry. So find a competent individual. Some people have a problem finding this type of individual, and I'll just say this. Test out a few people. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Get multiple bids. Get multiple bids. Test someone out, out. See how they work on a smaller job. If they work really well on a smaller job, chances are they're going to work pretty good on a larger job And I can well. tell you right now, if they're really screwing up something simple, they're going to screw up the big project. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, Number three is you gotta fund the deal, right? This is gonna mean one of two things. Either go out there and find your own lending team, your own loan officer, someone that understands investment lending, portfolio lending, works with multiple banks, and does hundreds of millions of investment deals. If they do that, they're qualified for that. Or, Steven and I have already built that here with us, so you can just come and use our team, and we'll help putting the funding in place, but you gotta have that funding person that understands the banking world that can help make that happen so, for you. So you had the question, someone just uh, had the question, should I get pre-qualified through a bank, right? Is that, is that what it came through? So should I get pre-qualified through a bank and, and the answer is absolutely yeah if you're uh, using your credit if you're the one that's doing the buying yeah yeah you should always know where you sit going to a bank to get pre-qualified to get your credit pulled so they can help you understand maybe where some derogatories are or what you need to fix or or uh, maybe what you need to pay down in order to be able to qualify for your next deal that's all part of the planning process Chris yeah. when you went out to get your first home it wasn't this like magical you know uh, what's what's her name the bibbity boppity boo lady the the bibbity the, the, the fairy boo. you know <laughs> it, you know she didn't come out and just say okay you're an investor now you've got everything you need no I actually got turned down by a number of banks and ran yeah. out of time and almost gave up before I found one bank that squeezed me through and got my first property. But you learned what you needed to do oh, so yeah. that you could prepare yeah. so that you get that proper funding. You have to go to the banks to understand what it is that they're looking for because if you don't know this, then you're just going to be sitting in limbo. And don't 
let fear step into the lending process. Banks are going to turn you down. They will. I get turned yep. down. Their job is to turn people down. They're looking for the lowest risk. And remember, they've got their own criteria. It's not a personal judgment. It's not an indictment. But if they don't pick you, guess what? Someone else will or you'll use someone else's credit. Because remember, when you're absolutely certain, don't let a bank determine what you can or can't do. And don't take advice from your credit. Just like you don't take it from your own pocketbook. I, if I did that, we're going to stay stuck for a really long time just where we at. So I just bought a home. And uh, the home that I just bought, actually, I was turned down by two other lenders before I was picked up by one, right? Yep. So the point is, is like Chris said, it's gonna happen over and over and over again, but make sure that you are utilizing those tools, get pre-qualified, know where you sit. Okay, the fourth member of the team that you need is someone to fill the home, right? If this is a short-term buy and hold, if it's a rental, if it's a lease option, you need a plan for who your PM is gonna be. Who's your property manager? Who's gonna put people in the home? Steven for a long time played this role for me and then he elevated to the upper echelons of the business and did lots of other things. You need someone on your team that's gonna do that again if it's not you. It's you if you like it or you need to understand it. I recommend that you try to play a lot of these roles in the beginning so that you can get enough knowledge and first hands-on experience to learn what's working, what's not working, what you like and what you don't like. So you gotta fill the home, you need a strategy for how that's going down. And the fifth and final is follow up, right? So follow up, in other words, rinse and repeat. Do this again and again and again. Once you've done it the right way, continue to use that information and, and go to your next property and go to your next property. Or uh, this also may, may be part of this is, is looking at the marketplace and looking at when is the right time to then pull some money out of that property yep. or, or go and, and transfer it to another property, whatever that might look. Perfect, so right now what we're gonna do is we're opening up for questions. We're gonna make this, this video right now way more interactive because we've got a live feed rolling. And for those of you that are watching, what are your questions about finding, fixing, funding, filling, or follow up as you're building a team, as you're putting it in place, and as you're establishing freedom for yourself or banishing out fear on any of those six Fs? Ask away your questions and let's address them right now. How do you address family, skeptics, critics? I'm guessing that's what you mean by that comment. Uh, so let's just jump into that real quick because the reality is when you first get started in real estate, everyone who has never done it, oh my which gosh. is most of your family, most of your, most of what your, are your you relatives. What are you doing, you crazy? <laughs> most of your friends. I told you to go to college. Yep. Look how you're wasting that degree. Right. What are you doing chasing these gurus and right. learnings and educations and I, getting I, rich? I didn't ever do it, so yeah. you probably can't do it. Oh my gosh, right. we live in a world, listen, you have got to surround yourself with people that are gonna support you in your dreams. Remember, listen, don't hold it against them. Remember, you also changed your mind. You're just the first to go. And the first to go, sometimes the pioneers take an arrow or two in the back, and you've gotta allow yourself to be reconciled with the fact that People that aren't doing what you're doing are going movers. to just yeah. disagreeing with you. Yeah. And that's okay. I remember when I started getting into real estate, I had all my family members like, what are you doing, dude? Some of them more skeptical than others. And then with time, they either got used to it or started inquiring or asking do you questions. Remember that, do you remember that video? Um, it was a while back and I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but I saw this one video of this guy who, uh, they were at this this outdoor music fest or something. You remember this? And this guy gets out there and he gets out in the middle and he starts oh, doing this yeah. crazy dance and he's just, you know, he's doing his thing, all, like no, no rhythm, right? Yeah, everyone, just, everyone's like, dude, that guy's crazy. He's, he's laughing. He's running his jig and dancing all over the place and getting crazy with the music. And he's out there for minutes. I mean, he was out there, I can't remember how long, but for minutes and minutes, he's by himself dancing. Until a second person. Until a second person gets up, join him. joins them. Now there's two people dancing. Now all of a sudden, this once lone crazy guy, lone wolf out there by himself is now joined with another person and he's got some social cred, right? He's got some social credibility. People are like, oh wow, this is actually fun to be out here dancing. And then all of a sudden you watch at this the point third, in the movie, this movie. The fourth, they the all, fifth. And all of a sudden this whole crowd joins this crazy man dancing. I'll tell you right now, it's the same with investing. If you find yourself wanting to invest but everyone's criticizing you or pulling you back into the bucket, whatever that might be, stay strong, keep dancing, do the real estate and you'll find that eventually you'll start to get people joining you. And all of a sudden your family, your friends, people that are the biggest critics are gonna look at you and say, oh, what are you doing? This yeah. seems to be working. What are you doing? And they're gonna step into that dancing circle and do more and more and want to do more with you. Yeah, this is the advice that you really need to be very, very aware of right now, is that if you are doubting any of your decisions to invest in real estate or how you're learning or educating or what you're gonna put in, the moment you've decided to allow doubt in, it's already over. I promise you won't do a deal 
while doubting yourself. You'll always be right in front of the next possible deal and then it'll be a mile away and then it'll be 100 miles away. So doubt, it's too expensive. You can't afford it. Waiting for the recognition of other loved ones to support you, it's too expensive. You can't buy that. Everyone has their own choice. Everyone has their own opinions. If you're waiting for loved ones or close ones to support you in what you're doing, then you might as well just put your life on hold indefinitely because if you're only gonna do what everyone else is doing, if you're only gonna do what other people are going to accept, you're going to never go anywhere. Okay, got another question. How do you determine the timing to sell in an equity growth market? Oh, great question. How do you determine timing to sell in an equity growth market? I just sold a bunch of these. Do you mind if I comment go on ahead, it? Go ahead. So I'm actively selling a lot of my homes right now in Vegas, Phoenix, Florida. Um, I bought up a slew of homes. Uh, this was about three, four years ago. So I bought most of these homes for around $130,000. Most of them had a rebuild value of around $200,000. After three, four years, most of those homes have gone up to 170, 180, 190. They haven't gotten even to the rebuild value. I'm selling and pulling out of the market. Why? Because I've gained a majority of what I'm gonna gain, which means now I'm gonna get diminished returns. So I'm taking that money and I'm rolling it into my next projects. Projects that have higher gains that will also eventually have diminishing returns. I'll take them out, I'll roll them forward, and then eventually those investments on the tail of when they're getting diminishing returns. I'm gonna pull it out, so I'm always going for a lion's share of what's available on the strategy, and I'm leaving money on the table. I'm always leaving money on the table because I value time. I might have to wait five more years and endure a greater level of risk for the last 20% of profits. Meanwhile, I've just made another 100% in this market. And while everyone's trying to capture the tail of that, I've moved out and I'm moving into the next opportunity. And so as far as when, when you go out, it, it is going to come down to a personal choice. If you're investing with our team, I recommend getting with your coach and having them give you a read on the market because basically you understand where you bought at, you understand what the market has reevaluated to, you understand what it has to get to on rebuild value. And the closer I get to it, the closer I am to deciding whether it's time to sell and move on. Yeah, another, another uh, determining factor could be kind of where you are in life. Uh, some of those equity growth markets have lower cash flows, and you may also be getting to a point in your life where you just, you want more cash flow and, and don't care so much about the that tail end of equity growth. And so that may be the right time to pull your money out, put it into a higher cash flowing market and, and start doing it that way. So there's a lot of different determining factors, but I think we gave you given you a couple there. Okay, we got another question. What are y'all's thoughts on investing in newly built home versus an older home, eight years plus? Okay, old homes that are older than eight years, new homes. First of all, let's just tackle definition of old versus new. Eight years is not gonna fall into my definition. It's not old. <laughs> yeah, but if we're talking about a home that's three decades old, now we're getting into old. And my definition really comes down to piping. Steven, for a while, was. Um, really exploited the whole industry of, well, what's it called, the, doing the inspections, home inspections. on homes? Yeah, home inspections. So Stephen, what has happened from the 50s, 70s, 80s? What have there been the improvements and upgrades on homes that used to be using old cast iron oh, yeah. that are now using different plumbing and PVCs? Yeah, and you know, th things have really improved. And I think, uh, and maybe not to get too much into the nitty gritties of all that, but when you're looking at the home, when you're looking at the age of a home, there's something, there's a difference between the, the actual age of the home and then the, um, oh, what's the word? It's, it's like after repair age of the home, you know, yeah. the, the updated age of the home. Um, and when you, when you look on the MLS, if you're looking at a home, it'll, it'll put those two different ages. Uh, and the one means that's when it was actually built. The other one means it's been updated to a certain point. So the estimated age is a little bit different. And, and so when you're looking at a home, you want to look at the systems. You know, you want to look at the, the, the plumbing. You want to see, is it cast iron or, or have they updated to either copper or, or PVC or things like that? The wiring. Is it old aluminum or even worse, is it knob and tube wiring or have they updated the wiring? Because I personally don't really care how old the home is as long as those systems have been updated. Yeah. And, and the reality is, is we go into some of these other markets, some of our Memphis and Indianapolis homes um, are older homes. Sometimes we buy homes that were built in the you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. But these homes have also been completely updated. So you're actually, you're essentially getting a newer home with old bones, mm -hmm. but the workings, the systems are, are, are all updated. Now here's the principle that you need to be focusing on right now. Understand that getting a deal on a new home is way less likely than getting a deal on an old home, right? When everything's brand new, it sells at a certain point and it's fairly static in the market. It becomes elastic the older the home gets. So when you start looking at a home that's 20 years old, 30 years home, 30 years old, then all of a sudden, finding a home with an equity position or finding something wrong with the house that's easy to fix that would bump up the value drastically becomes more available. So am I out there buying homes that were built in the last decade? 
generally not. I, we only do that when we go into our high growth markets and the market has tanked on something new. Those homes I love to buy, but frankly, they don't perform a whole lot different than a home built in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s. And so for me personally, once I get older than 1980, that's where if a home hasn't been updated, you start stepping into oh, yeah. older wiring, Careful. older plumbing, and just more problems. And you need to anticipate that maintenance and you gotta factor that into the ARV after repair value because that home's gonna need more money, more maintenance. And as long as you're factoring it, then hey, I'll buy a home that's 100 years old. Yep. And people are like, what? It's like, yeah, for a buck, I would totally buy that house, right? <laughs> like, every home at the right price can make sense. Yeah. But for the most part, we have a formula and we're following that formula. I hope that answers your question. Great questions, everybody. Any okay, more? Do you have any last questions? Okay, friends, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having those questions. And just real quick, I want you to be aware, special announcement. You need to mark your calendar and be in town at a corporate office. We haven't decided whether it'll be corporate office or Maybe here in my home. Else. We'll see. But February 7th, Stephen and I are launching the biggest next level innovation of our real wealth community. And it's not something you're going to want to miss because we're going to show you how to put an extra fifty dollars to $100,000 in your pocket in 2018. You're going to want to be there February 7th. It'll go nuts. It's going to be, this is, this is the biggest thing yep. I've done in real estate, Stephen done in real estate yep. since our inception. So February 7th in the evening, set it aside for our community members. We will have spent an entire day training. We've got training also the next day after on the 8th. It'll be happening in that evening and it's going to be a very, very, very special time to release an innovation that is going to touch all of us. Absolutely. So make sure you mark it on your calendar. See you later. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this is immensely helpful for you. If you want a shortcut and step right into an existing power team that knows how to crush it, go ahead and click the link up here. And on the website, you're going to get some information from me and my team on how we can help you step right into real estate into massive, awesome results.